The other day I was moving some of these components around and when I hooked everything back up I noticed that one of the speakers wasn't working right. I narrowed it down to the output RCA jack on the SEQ711 graphic equalizer. Now as a hobbyist I feel like I am competent enough to at least fix this on my own and I think I've diagnosed it down to two problems even before cracking this open. But first this is what it sounds like when it doesn't work. I think I've been able to diagnose what I think the problem is in here with the output jack. Since that's the thing that seems to get any action when you plug something in and out, I think the likely culprit is that there's a solder connection that's not quite right, has worn down, so when you push the jack in, it doesn't make the connection right. I think that's the likely case. and in. And in most cases, that's probably going to be the easiest fix. I just have to put some more solder there to reconnect it. However, if that isn't the case and there's something else wrong, I already went ahead and bought some replacement RCA jacks for the back of this. I think it was $7 for all four of these. Um, and if that's the case, I'll just simply replace it. But that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to check out the RCA output jack on this Sony SEQ711 graphic equalizer. Okay, so let's crack this thing open and see what we've got. And I'm just using a simple Phillips head screwdriver to unscrew uh, the four screws that hold the case top down. And I'm going to be looking mostly at the RCA jack connection, which is right here. Next, I'm going to start disconnecting some of the internals here. Uh, these ribbon cables, uh, no doubt, run the spectrum analyzer, so I'm going to those simply slide out. And this here connects the external plug, so that gets disconnected too. And now I'm figuring out how to remove these little plastic things that hold the board down to the base. And I was thinking about doing it from underneath, and I'm just assessing what would be the best if I take it out from the top or do it from underneath. But then I got distracted and decided to unscrew the AC outlet and RCA jack connectors first. And I can tell you that these screws were in here tight. Probably haven't been moved in 30 years, so I don't know if they even used Loctite or something else, but it took me a while to get these out. So after that, I turned my attention to the RCA jack, uh, which was much easier. These unscrewed with no problem. So then I was able to come back to what I originally was looking at, which were these little plastic feet that hold the board down to the base. And I was able to determine that using a pliers to squeeze them, I was able to push it through the bottom, and that seemed to work best. I was a little concerned that I didn't want to you know, break any brittle plastic, but this actually wasn't too bad. Uh, just a little squeeze was enough to get it through, uh, as you'll see here. And also here. There it goes. And I'll do this third one. And there we go. Now this was the first time I noticed these two screws here. And uh, after flipping it over and investigating, I realized it was to hold down the transformer there, I guess, to add. There's a little bracket underneath there you'll see later. But that's what these screws are for, so I also have to remove these. And these screws are very easy. Just a regular Phillips head screwdriver, and it comes out no problem. Now, take note, this is the last screw that's holding this whole thing in here. And you'll see when I get it loosened up, uh, it makes a big clunk because the transformer falls on the table. Now that sounded a lot worse than it actually was, but that was the last thing that was holding this together. So now I've got to try and flip it over very delicately so nothing gets dislodged before I want to move it. And now I'm just doing a visual once over to see if there's anything else that needs any attention, like if there's a bulging cap or some other loose solder joints. But so far, so good. So now I'm visually inspecting the solder connections for the RCA jacks, and even though it's a little off camera here, I've noticed that the connections are actually fine, so I think it's the RCA jacks that need replacing, so that's what I'm going to do. 
So with the soldering iron hot, I've got that ready and also the solder sucker. And I'm just going to heat this up and pull the solder out of these so I can release the jacks easily. And now I'm going to reset the solder sucker and do the next connection. And now I'm just going to repeat the same thing for all the connections. All right, so now the first set is out and I simply lift it up and pull the old one out. And now I'm gonna compare that to the new one. And I saw something interesting when I was comparing to this to the new one and I'll explain what that is here. So you'll see I tried to dry fit one in the socket and then I noticed that the distance or height, whatever you wanna call it, between the old one and the new one was different by almost to maybe a quarter of an inch. Um, they look the same at first, but then you see when they align on the board, the new one pushes out way farther. Um, so I kind of had to make a determination of what I was going to do here. If I was going to try and buy an original Sony part or use these replacements. Um, I'm going to take a chance and use these replacements and see if I can get everything to fit. So here I'm just trying to line it up flat on the board so that it's not on an angle. And it takes me a few times, but I do eventually get it to sit right before I start the soldering. All right, now that I've got everything level, I can begin. And I'm going to do each of these slowly and carefully. And I'm also going to make sure that I don't breathe in the vapor or smoke or whatever that comes off this. So if you are doing this at home, uh, don't breathe that in. So let me speed through this here. All right, that looks pretty good. So let me give this a wiggle to make sure I got everything seated properly. And it looks pretty good to me. So I think I'm ready to do the one right next to it. Since I'm in here, I may as well do all of them. And just like the other one, this is pretty much the same thing. Uh, removing the old solder, using the solder sucker, making it as clean as possible, and then removing the jack carefully before inserting the new one. Now that I've got this lined up, it's ready to be soldered in as well. And just like before, go slowly and precisely and don't breathe in those fumes. So now is the moment of truth to whether my gamble is going to pay off of this fitting or not. And surprisingly enough, even though you can kind of see it's a little bit on an angle there um, at the back where it doesn't quite align with the back of the uh, base, it actually fits in there. And I was able to get all the pieces back into the spots. Even these little plastic feet were able to go back into the base. Um, so I was surprised, uh, or I should say happily surprised, uh, that it all fit back together, but it did go back together, so I'm glad I was able to use these replacement RCA jacks. And now I'm just reassembling this back in the same order that I basically took it apart in. Uh, doing the AC outlet first, um, screwed in much easier this time. I guess getting these loosened from taking them out made it a lot easier. And even though it's off camera, I did those RCA jacks here, so I moved it around so now you can see it a little better. Um, now the transformer goes back in as well. That also aligned, I was surprised. And I made sure those little feet fit in there too. And these are the Spectrum Analyzer ribbon cables. And now it's time for the case top. And screw it back in just the same way you once screwed it to take it off. So now it's the real, real moment of truth to see if all of my hard work is going to pay off. So far, so good. Let's jiggle the connection to make sure I got it right. All right.
right, so I'm going to call this a great success. If you like what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.